All right, good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for November 15th, 2023. Um, on the Patreon site, the uh, PDF version of the book is available now uh, for nine ninety seven. You can also get it at the Owl Group Bookstore. That link is also on Patreon. Um, the uh, physical uh, print on demand copy from Amazon still there at the same same location. Appreciate your support. Uh, I'll be announcing the details on the um, author's book tour for that thing, where we're going to read in detail a chapter a week and um, do Q and A and discussion of the book and any topics you want to talk about. That'll be. Um, I think probably a 10-week course, uh, recordings made, and uh, you get to ask questions directly. It'll be the um, sort of a di author direct book tour. We'll record that and make a home study course available too. All uh, right, we'll start with the uh, Alcoa 30-minute charts with the hybrid swing. So yesterday's Gap and go entry, which closed here, continued to go on the second leg up, and the R10 rolled over. We took the exit because now we're holding 6R, and we don't know let that go. I had a question uh, why we didn't take this exit yesterday. Because the market was in an amazing, huge gap up, and every single large cap stock was all taken off and showed no signs of weakness. And that was a chance to uh, play for a second position and a possibly a favorable gap. Uh, that's a one in a thousand kind of a day, or maybe one in a hundred. Uh, you got to be prepared to uh, frame the trade and take the risk and live with the consequences. That's why. Um, you will notice, of course, that if you just calm down and take the exit here and then the re-entry here, you're getting essentially the same trade with no overnight risk. Objectively, it's probably better, but you don't, and you could always re enter if possible, but I made the decision and lived with it yesterday. So that's why. Uh, AI. Uh, this one, this one was back on the 13th. We did the we cashed one and then re-entered, and then it closed well, had a huge gap up and held. We held it. Uh, I did not add a second position. I was thinking hard about that, but there was a lot going on. And so this rolled up uh, to the new 30-day high. When the R10 reversed, I take the, uh, take the uh, dragon skin exit, and that one is huge. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten R, and we'll we'll bank that one. Uh, Amazon about three R, closed at the opening, considered going short here on like a collapsing dragon, elected not to, and then, and then elected to regret that then elected to forgive myself but setting up for a nice uh, z, uh, z zero trade tomorrow uh, this one is uh, caterpillar uh, no trade today cliff uh, tried the gap and go on the emerging dragon and gave us a fraction uh, no trade on CVS uh, Disney about a three-day uh, swing was closed with about 5R going into the close. I just, it was so, so calm and perfect. I, and, uh, I, and the R10 had rolled over. I know how to re enter. And that sets up a, just like the previous one, this will set up. Ah, dummy. Sorry, that's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah, trying to 
set up this nice tight Z3 pinch kind of trade, a zero state ready to break in either direction. So no overnight risk and uh, we'll be calm on that one tomorrow. Um, dish network, no trade. Um, micro win on Devon on the long side. I considered the uh, uh, supported fall crossing, elected not to, and then elected to regret. Electronic arts, no trade. Uh, emerging markets closed the two-day swing for about 5R at the Dragon Skin exit. Uh, Ethereum um, bought the SSC. It closed pretty well. Uh, I wanted to hold that one uh, overnight, so I did. Mexico, uh, two-day swing. That is still holding um, one, two, three, three and a half R closed very well. Um, we exited this one yesterday, missed the re-entry um, in, in Brazil, so no trade. Intel, uh, we added a second position. Uh, the first position, which was a Kata 2 yesterday, and which closed well with three R in hand, favorable gap. And then that just took off. That's holding about 10. Um, was tempted to just cash that one right there, but um, we'll, we'll take that. Uh, we'll take that trade. Uh, international paper, um, emerging dragon and gap and go and closed well, holding about two R. Real estate closed the gap and go for 3R, actually 4R, sorry. And that's setting up a nice uh, Z3 pinch for tomorrow in either direction. Coke, no trade. Uh, regional banks closed the two-day swing at the end of the day for 6. Um, Mattel took an intraday gift of 1. McDonald's. Tried um, yesterday to get the uh, caught of two, held it, and today it started weak, so we basically scratched, missed the follow through to the downside. Merck, um, collapsing dragon short, uh, half an R, didn't really collapse. No trade in Microsoft, too choppy. Um, no trade in marijuana. Tried a, we closed the, um, the long side gap and go from yesterday at a scratch. Played the continuation when it fell out the bottom of the red box and for half an hour. PBW closed the gap and go on two positions, massive trade. That was about 12 R and took the dragon skin exit. Uh, Rivian, uh, gap and go, fraction, gave back a lot more than I should have, I think. Half an hour. Uh, SPY stabilized sideways channel, Treasury stabilized after the gap down. Tesla added a second position finally on this one and then uh, couldn't take the heat and uh, had no will to hold it overnight. Uh, was too busy thinking about it and thinking about it. So said, that's enough of that. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then one on this one. So that's a twelve R trade. Like it. The key was re-entry. That was the key to sanity. After this one, we didn't want to hold it overnight and then entered the next morning. Looked just like a regular continuation until it got above this resistance level, and then off it went. Twelve R. U.S. Steel, no trade. Uh, we'll dial down to the three minutes. Sniper trade of the day. So, uh, opened up in the morning. Instantly went oversold. So we read up. 
there's a MACD histogram uptick. So when that closes, we read up to where this closed. Then we make a, uh, we're prepared to buy on a, uh, a move above the high of that. And the next bar opened here, sold off, took off. So we buy it here. And the signal for me to get out was if it had fallen below the Bollinger Band mean, which is slightly below the PSR. So there's our risk box, and that is the trade. Check or hold. I mean, at some point, just get in. Activate the fireman. Uh, in that same bar, it closed pretty well. Looking good. Uh, still nothing. At that point, about four bars in, I feel like it's time. to uh, move, move our stop from here to about there. To lock in our, our little wedge, a little no lose plus dinner for two. And that looked like a reasonable place to take the exit uh, at the oh, come on dummy at the low of this bar. When this runs up, then opens and now starts selling off. Just take it right there, and then that locks in this much gain on that much risk. So probably a 0 0.7. Check or hold. Cotta 2 starting to shape up. Cotta 2 entry on the PSAR flip. Uh, this time my wrist box, my execution wrist box is a little bit smaller. It's going to the bottom of the dragon. Interestingly, this is the case where the bottom skin of the dragon is a little bit lower than the bottom of the RL10, so I pick I pick that. Would it be crazy to lock in that to the No, I don't think so. You could do that. Don't lose money. So if I've moved say like this so if we locked in that much so far now I see this little breakout and up we go and then it can't make a new high sells off a little bit and comes back to there so not the weakest symbol but or not the weakest but if we just look at the close if we just look at the closes You know, I've sort of got that little action going on. The R10 hasn't rolled over, but it is starting to. Instead of going straight up, it has started to curl. So now when that closes right here, I have to, and my if my stop is right here, at the lower skin of the dragon, I could consider raising it actually to the lower skin of the dragon uh, spine 
upper skin of the dragon and a one bar low. So I would go one, two, three, four, five. Five would be keeping it in place and just keeping a no lose plus dinner for two. Uh, by show in the text box where do you put your where do you put your stop? I see you vote for four, for three, for two. Yeah. Yeah, I could live with two. I, I sort of like two. I think that's the upper skin of the dragon. Uh, it's the two bar low. It's all kind of moot. Uh, at this point, you know, we've survived another five bars. Um, you know, we could be here, here, <coughs> here. We might be at the two bar low. One, two, three, four. And you can see that we're opening right here. Four is looking pretty popular. I don't think I would disagree with that. Survived another one. Um, so now I'm, I'm well into this thing. And whether you... Uh, put on a second position or not let's just take a look at some choices here for you know if we said our stop is here at four some some choices on trailing stops we could we could leave this one in place until the Bollinger Band mean picks up and then we could pick the Bollinger Band mean or we could just go with the PSAR or the lower skin of the dragon. So one, two, three. If you had to pick a trailing stop on the basis of this, and recognizing you might have put in a two hour battle drill, you know, somewhere around in here, you probably hit, if you were going to put a second position on. To our battle drill, and uh, that and I see two looks pretty popular. So if we just said, "Hey, we're going to adopt the PSAR and just live with it," this is what this is what we would get. We end up getting the PSAR exit, the um, the upside of that thing. Again, we take a look at this um, price structure at the end. So we're just tracking the exits. You know, after this little blip right here, all five of those closes are higher until this one opens and then this starts crashing down and the R10 starts rolling over the Dragon or the RL30 is rolling over you'd have had to have been pretty quick uh, to get to get this one because it doesn't it doesn't roll over until it closes and it's already closing right there. So you might have taken that exit. You might have arbitrarily uh, taken the one bar low. But I think you'd be pretty happy with that exit. Um, and this is, in retrospect, say, well, why am I monkeying around with this? Why don't I always just take the PSAR? 
That's a reasonable question. So keep studying it and answer that question for yourself. But when I get into position, you know, somewhere around in here and I'm good to go and I'm looking for which one of these elements to, to be my trailing stop, I almost always just pick the PSAR. It's like the middle dif distance between the southern skin of the dragon and the um, Bollinger Band mean. What I would say when I activate a sniper exit, though, is after I've had a significant move up and the RL-10 distinctly rolls over, then, if I can, unless it's already passer, that's where I like to uh, invoke the upper skin of the dragon and then just leave that there. Like, we didn't know this was going to be a great big bar down. I mean, this could have been a slow decay, and then the up, that would still be the upper skin of the dragon. And that's going to give back slightly less than 1R. And so all things considered, the PSAR on price is a pretty good, pretty good exit. And the reason I say execute on the price hitting the PSAR on your exit is because look where the RL10 is here. And look where that bar closed. When you need it the most, the RL10 price run is running away from the RL10 and creating that temporary gap. The entire rest of the move, it was bisecting all of those bars, basically. Until the moment that you needed it the most, two huge bars down, and it runs away this far that's why I say, and I continue to say when you ask me, every time you ask me, uh, do you execute on price or the RL10 on the exit? I execute on the price. That's why. Because I don't want to give all of that back. Uh, you could solve that by hanging a wrist box off the top, and you end up getting an exit somewhere in that region as well. It's not that hard. Crossing the Bollinger Band main, uh, the fail is continuing, so I just put it, or short it, I should say. for about an hour, and this is sort of that routine exit. R10 reverses, so when that reverses, that means I'm activating the skin of the dragon, and we exit right there. So we make bank on this against that much risk, one R. Check or hold. And that one was in AI. It's still in play. All right, so here's uh, Alcoa. OR3, gap and go second bar into the trade would it be okay just to do that you could do that if you wanted to eliminate your risk You could do that. No lose plus dinner for two. And you'd be out. 
Uh, I'd have been better if I'd have done that. I ended up being a little bit surprised by that, and I was able to get out at the skin of the dragon. So instead of, you know, some little fractional win, you know, I lose about 0.6, and I end up, uh, I, I get short here, vicinity, the OR3. And that reverses against me sharply, so I just take a half an hour loss. I take the essentially RLXD, just pig headed standard risk. Front running the piece are a little bit here. Basically executing price crossing the peak of the dragon pump. Mostly an irritation entry. To our battle drill. For our battle drill, standard exit at the skin of the dragon. So this whole collection here is about minus 1.5 ish. This one earns one, two, three, four. This one earns two, and that one's a scratch. Um, so six minus 1.5, so about 4.5 net. Uh, collapsing dragon, piece R flip, owl entry short, 2R, standard work. Re-entry, standard work, one and a half R. So this was 4.5, this is two, that's one, 1.5-ish. 1. So that's 3.5 and 4.5, eight. Alcoa. Studying the chess games of Frank Marshall. From a 1905 match with Siegbert Terrish. A hundred years ago. Uh, George cuts that one well, tempted to go short there, didn't, waits for the cut of two, gets a second and a third position, brings home 5.1, 4.8 for the day, pretty good shooting. Oh, that's the same one we just did too, nice. Um, my brother... So this is an AI. Um, he gets a second position here at the start of the day. This is one that he paid for with yesterday's gains. Um, second position, he goes to a capital preservation stop of 0.40 and brings home 10.6. Uh, switch to his capital preservation stop here after the morning started to slow down. Get stopped out for 2.8. Standard work. Tim. 
3.6 in the usual way using a sniper layout on international paper that well-known raging intraday trading vehicle well we know that not many other people know that I, I, I surmise uh, 3.6 are standard management on the exit at the dragon skin Um, Hamad uh, minus two and a half in in the pound which was very very choppy but he makes up for that with 7R total out of Alcoa's early morning move um, IP taking advantage of the industrials fellas they just trade smoothly and uh, and Rivian making a really nice entry uh, right here you notice the 2R battle drill gets that second position on great exit and re-entry uh, so about 7R total looking pretty good oops where is my let's see Pause. All right. Um, let's see. So the hundred and fifty day. Um, at this test, what's it going to do? Was it going to roll back like it did before? Or was it going to roll up like it did before? It votes to the upside. And here we are in today's little range now, you know, five days after this test. We're all the way back up to this test. Is it going to go on to the previous swing high? Or is it going to fail back to this test like it did before? Another compound critical state, fellas, expecting a sharp move. Look how large the 5 and 10 day ranges are compared to the 30 day. And the 30 day range is almost as large. That 30 day range is almost as large as the 150 day range it took a hundred it took that long to get that far so that's the 150 day high and low is the pink lines the 30 day range encompasses most of that and look it made that in down and up that's an extraordinary amount of volatility really really favoring the swing traders And then the 10-day range is uh, half of the 150-day range. And the 5-day range is 70% of the 10-day range. That's why I am a short-term, short, term, short uh, I get, no, that's saying it wrong, a fast swing trader. Because in the 30-minute bars, you get a chance to get these major moves while the 30 minute bar gives you cushion against some of that spiky volatility intraday. It lets you stay in those positions long enough to get those kinds of two, three, four, five day moves like that one and that one and this one and that one. So short term swing trading is really what the market is solving for right now. Here's the uh, the daily. So this is where we're testing now. Let's go to. 
bullish normal, very strong in all dimensions, consistently overbought. Uh, volatility is screaming to the upside, ready to sh reverse or to continue. Compound critical state based on location and volatility. This is a fireworks condition. What's a fireworks condition, Ken? It's a sniper pattern where you have an extraordinarily strong move up that terminates in a large volatility move and then you wonder after this extreme stretch and the exhaustion buying is this where it reverses sharply or do they find a second win and keep going so the fireworks is like on the 4th of July when you see the big beautiful dandelion explosion boom oh, and now you're waiting for that second boom did they sneak another one in or is it going to fall all the way back to the baseline does it come all the way back or is there a second boom in here which takes it another leg higher that's why we call it the fireworks and it can take one two or three days for that to happen just building tension the whole time big breakouts everywhere you can see uh, only Exxon Mobil's on an auto framer. Big winners, Pfizer, Intel, Disney. Intel and Disney, remember those names. Um, in the ETFs, also everything was breakouts to the upside. Raging bull. Only a handful of auto framers, all in the energy sector, plus gold and Johnson & Johnson. Very few squeezes, but the S&P and diamonds and tech are all super squeezed. This is not a runaway upside move yet. There can still be a second explosion. In fact, that's actually more likely now because what you had was a great big burst up and then today was a squeeze, so you had a smaller range. So you had one big boom of an explosion and then today's range is small it's quiet yeah too quiet is that going to give you a second boom or is it going to fall to earth that's why this is prime time trading for tomorrow because it's act the volatility squeeze was in the s p and diamonds and tech and the Qs, and Coke, and Treasuries, and EurasIA, they're all squeezing, waiting for the next guy to move first. So we we could very easily see some uh, sharp moves tomorrow, followed by reinforcing momentum. More so than usual. Standard work here on the auto framer. Still quite a lot of uh, goodies in there, better than two to one. Like uh, regional banks and clean energy, they were both over 7% today, but they're still better than 25 to 1 on the swing trade. That's how far they had fallen and how good they could be. Dominated by the summer. Um, you see just about everything was raging to the upside. So you want to look for the ones that were consistently strong. Walmart, Intel, IBM. Easy. And then diamonds and uh, EWZ Brazil in the ETFs. Easy. Standard work on the frog trading list. All right, that's everything for today. Take good care, guys. We shall see you tomorrow.